How many times have you been looking at city workers surrounding a pothole and thought there's not a lot of work going on? Well, some city officials in Hamilton, Ontario thought the same thing and they did a little investigating. It's led to a whole pile being fired. Here is City of Hamilton manager Chris Murray. As you're aware, yesterday uh, 31 uh, frontline workers uh, received uh, discipline. Uh, one, two of them have been suspended for 30 days, 29 have been uh, uh, terminate, uh, terminated uh, with cause. We're now sitting down and having discussions with our uh, supervisors to uh, understand uh, what role they played in, in this whole process. Everyone is unionized. It's all five, yeah, QP 5167. All right, and the union is saying they're going to hold off a minute to figure out how they're going to react to this. It looks like people have been caught with their pants down. Now, 29 fired, but there were 31 in total. 31 with an average salary, according to the city, of 50000 a year, $1.55 million. And why were the other two not fired? Well, when confronted, they fessed up. Joining us to talk more about this is Gareth Nielsen. He is with the Fair Pensions for All organization. Hey, Gareth, this is your organization looks at public sector pensions compared to the private sector. And, and when you raise issues, you're told, oh, you know, we've got to leave everything it is. Everyone's valuable. We, we can't cut anywhere. Everything is so valuable. We had 29 people out of a department of 81 not doing a thing, and nobody noticed for a while. Well, I think that this is uh, uh, symptomatic of the problem. I think what we're seeing uh, is uh, a society now where our public sector employees uh, feel like they work for the union uh, or they work for a government. They don't work for the uh, private sector taxpayer who actually uh, gives them everything that they have. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have the checks and balances within our public service uh, to uh, root out these problems. I would uh, like to give a lot of credit to Chris Murray as the manager. He recognized there was an issue, and I'm sure there was a lot of pressure on him not to do anything about it. Uh, kudos to him, certainly, for stepping forward. But look, we've seen a massive increase in compensation of the public servants over the last nine or ten years. About 7% a year is what we've seen at the municipal level. And with that 7%, you're also looking at public servants that can qualify up to 70% of that in a pension. We can't afford it, and we certainly can't afford it when they don't even do the job, Brian. Well, here's part of the other problem is some of the other 81 had to know something was going on. And why weren't they speaking up? I know it can be difficult, but if you're doing the job and you're working hard, and I know there's hardworking public servants, not all of them are like these guys that were just an hour and a half a day apparently they were working and billing for a full day the other people weren't speaking up is that because of a, a culture of intimidation because of the the union atmosphere is that a culture of intimidation just because of the work atmosphere but they should have had a way to blow the whistle on this i think this comes back to our, our wonderful friend david dingwall when he said entitled to our entitlements and you've got to keep that kind of thing in mind i think that they they work in a collectivist environment uh, somehow the union is paramount over everybody else. Uh, certainly there is a, a system in place where uh, divided unions cannot happen. So uh, those uh, employees certainly are not going to uh, rat each other out. As, and, and in terms of the entitled to the entitlements, uh, these uh, public sector employees uh, don't just look at their salaries and benefits uh, as an entitlement. They look at their job as an entitlement. And, and herein lies the problem. So uh, I don't think in that kind of union environment, with all the stakes that are uh, in place with uh, the union officials, that there's any chance that you're going to get a union member ratting out another one. I just don't think that's going to happen. And again, kudos to Chris Murray for recognizing the problem and doing something to fix it, or else this could have gone on for years and years and years before it stopped. All right. Does this give you more grounds in your call for reform of uh, public service pensions? Well, it, it does. And the reason why is because there is no accountability. And what we've seen over the last nine or 10 years is a massive explosion of compensation at both the municipal and provincial level. And you have to keep in mind that public sector pensions are based on your best five year service and your salary. So if you're making $100,000 a year when you retire, you have the ability to collect up to $70,000 a year. We've seen a 7% growth year in, year out We've seen a doubling of compensation at the municipal level, and we've seen OMERS, which uh, a number of years ago was in the hole, and the, and the provincial government said, you've got to come up with a plan. They're now four years into the plan, and in that four years, they've gone from $286 million in unfunded liability to up to uh, over $10 billion, 
And that unfunded liability has now been put onto the backs of the taxpayers at the municipal level, thanks to Dwight Duncan. And right. so what we're saying is there is uh, there needs to be a fundamental change, a fundamental shift. And quite frankly, there's a lot of calls out there right now for privatization. And the situation in Hamilton does not make that better. People are demanding privatization because they see the private sector as having a check and balance against lazy workers who don't do their job. Gareth, thanks for joining us today. Anytime, Brian. Thank you.